Now, if we're just trying to come up with the inverse function, we're just trying to say, if this is my rule, what's the rule that does the opposite of it? I put numbers into this function, I get results out. What rule is going to flip that case? Let me write down a concrete example. If I put in, oh, let's say 2. That will be negative 3 times 2 plus 5, which is 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So that means that whatever I come up with for the inverse function, if I put negative 1 in, I better get 2 back out. That will be my checkpoint. I can fall back to this and say if I did it right, then if I put negative 1 into the inverse, 2 should come out because it will undo what I did the first time. We said the process is to write this as y equals, and then I'm going to flip it. Now it's just a matter of doing a little bit of algebra at this point. We need to get the y by itself. Okay, let's back up. This was just an example. I said, what if I used 2? And I did that so I would have kind of a, a checkpoint to fall back to. Why did you not put the You can just use any number. Yeah. And really, this part right here is kind of optional. I'm just doing that as we're discussing in class so we can keep having this conversation about what the inverse means. The inverse being, if the original rule says, give me a 2, I'll give you a negative 1. The inverse what? says... You give me a negative 1, I'll give you a 2. Is, there, is, there, is it going to be like, like a table that's going to say like f sub 1 times fx is 1 and you do like all the x's and then you have to find f, x and f and then we can invert that? Yeah. So that's how it's going to be? Some of it. And some of it will be, here's a function, write the inverse. Okay. So now I'm going to try to get y by itself. If you really have to, yeah, go. Um, what do I have to do to get the y isolated here? Divide by, no, minus 5. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so do the opposite. So it's a plus 5, so I have minus 5. That's going to give me x minus 5 equals negative 3y. Divide that by negative 3. And remember, you're dividing both things over there by the same value. So negative 1 third x. Now, negative 5 minus 3, or divided by negative 3, is a positive 5 thirds, right? No, no, it's 1, negative 1 third, and then positive 5 thirds. So that means the inverse function that goes with this is negative 1 third x plus 5 thirds. And I can always check that by going back to my concrete example point. I can say, well, what happens if I plug, set that thought over, if I plug in negative 1, what do I get? So negative 1 third of negative 1 plus 5 thirds. So this becomes a positive 1 third plus 5 thirds. Same denominator, so 6 thirds, which is 2. That's what I expected I would get. Mm -hmm. Sorry. The whole point of this exercise is to say, the inverses mean you flip the x and the y, so let's write an equation that'll do that for me. That'll predict this new table of values. 